Hello, I'm Emily and I'm an educator at Mohai and this is Collection Connections Objects in Question, where we take a quick peek into Seattle history by taking a really close look at an item in our teaching collection to see what it can tell us about the past. Today, we're going to be exploring World War II Homefront in Seattle and this is our artifact. But first, let's have a think. So, what do I think about when I think about the home front in Seattle during World War II? Let's start with that word home front. So home front are the different ways that civilian life is impacted during war, and especially in wars where soldiers are fighting in other countries. And if I'm not super familiar with World War II, I might just ask myself, what do I think about when I think about war? Uh, what events happen on the home front? Who do I think about? What images or symbols or words come to mind? For me, when I think about this, some of the words that pop into my head are loss. So thinking about loss of life or place or home and sacrifice. And I also think about the word patriotism. And when I think about that word, I think about symbols like flags and symbols that are important to people and governments related to their home countries. And I also think about iconic images like Rosie the Riveter during World War II, uh, who kind of represents women who are entering manufacturing industries and jobs traditionally held by men who are kind of participating in new ways in the economy in order to support the war effort. And I think about other people like soldiers and their families. And when I think about all of this specifically in Seattle during World War II, I think of some of those industries where women are entering new roles, like in shipbuilding and plane manufacturing. I think about other people who are moving to this area to live on military bases. And when I think about loss, I also think about the forced removal of Japanese Americans from their homes. And I think about just all of the big changes that came to this area because of World War II. This is the object we'll be exploring today. Our first step is just to take a quick look at this object, our first glance. Now, the next step is to make as many observations as possible. So paying attention first to the materials, it feels like almost this whole thing is made of different kinds of paper. So we've got this kind of thicker, somewhat textured paper on the outside that's blue, and it's folded over this way to kind of make a pocket on the inside cover. Oh, I do see some metal staples going down the middle of this book, which is interesting. So a new material. And then the pages are made of paper. They're a kind of cream color. It looks like some of the words on the page are printed. So they're either stamped like this red number here, or they're printed using a printing machine like these black letters and kind of the lines and text below. But then there's some words that look like they're hand drawn, maybe with a pen. They're in blue and black ink, and it looks like different people's handwriting as well. So they've got text that it's been added. And then over here, we've got really thin paper that's perforated. So it's got really tiny little lines of holes almost that make it easy to tear the pieces of paper apart. And these pieces of paper, these tiny pieces of paper, have different letters and numbers on them. Uh, some are green, some are black. Oops, some say coffee, some say spare. And then it's all really fragile, just looking at the condition. It seems like this, these come apart really easily. There's a lot of folds and bends in the paper. And then there's a lot of creases on this back cover as well. And it looks like there's this pocket here on the back that's filled with all of these tiny pieces of paper as well. And just taking a look at some of the words on here. So oftentimes the biggest words are the most important ones. On the front cover, it says ration book. 
on these main pages here, it says War Ration Book 4. It says United States of America, Office of Price Administration. And then let's see, the name that I see here is Catherine Bates. Let's see if the name is the same on another page. Nope, it says Gilbert Bates on this one and Marjorie Bates on this one. Interesting. And let's see, what else do we notice about this object? I mean, it's pretty light, you know, it's pretty compact. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good close look. I mean, taking a look at this, it seems like that word ration really stands out to me. So that means like a portion or a particular amount of something that's kind of given out. And it seems like it's made by the federal government. This is something that was made and given out by the federal government. So I'm guessing that this is some sort of way to ration things, maybe coffee, for example, since there's something that says coffee in there. That's my guess. Look at that. So in this 1942 photo, we see a poster that has a family gathering newspapers in a pile and it looks like maybe there are some other materials around the newspaper piles as well. And the bold text above and around them says, wanted for victory, waste paper, old rags, scrap metals, old rubber, get in the scrap. And then at the bottom it says, sell to a collector or give to a charity. So we can see that people are being encouraged to save materials that can be potentially upcycled to make things like plane parts and new tires for the war. So it seems like the war has really impacted the availability of particular goods and also raw materials. Ration books like this one were given out to families and to individuals to make sure that every consumer had the same maximum amount of certain goods that they could purchase any given month. So the way that it works is that, you know, if you were buying, let's see, we have coffee stamps in here, for example. Whenever you were buying coffee at the grocery store, you would have to give up a certain amount of coffee stamps from your ration book, and you would have that number of stamps worth of coffee that you could buy any given month. If you ran out, then you couldn't buy any more coffee for the month. So what does this tell us about life on the home front in Seattle during World War II? Well, one of the things that I think it tells us is just the way that doing without and making do really became a way of life during the war. And I think these two items in particular together show us the ways that the government took different approaches to kind of managing supplies and raw materials during the war. So there were some structural changes like instituting a rationing program that the government put in place. And then there also was a lot of emphasis through things like posters on personal responsibility to support the wartime effort. I'm still really curious about what some of these stamps are, especially the ones that are just numbers and letters and don't say things like coffee on them. And I'm really curious just about the process of running a program like this. How do they decide how much people get every single month? To explore some of your own history questions, you can explore our online collection and visit the Mohai website. That's mohai.org, M-O-H-A-I.org. And you can also email us at education at mohai.org if you have any future requests for collection connections, objects in question, topics. Thanks for watching.